Welcome to the Watts 3010 Introduction to Web Development. This course is part of the Certificate in Web Technology and Application Studies at Seattle University. I'm Becky Peltz, and I'm going to walk you through the set of tutorials for the Skills One repo, which teaches you the basics of HTML and CSS. There will be a separate video for each tutorial in this Skills One repo. You will only have to fork the repo once and publish to GH Pages once, but I'll point this out in every video. The Skills One tutorials prepare you for the Project One, a page with internal navigation. Let's get started. So I'm here in the SU Web Development account, and I find the 3010 Skills One repository. Click on that, and you can see that there are one through eight tutorials. Each tutorial is set up to be sort of its own website. Sometimes you'll be adding an index HTML, and sometimes one will already exist. And so you'll be following directions in the README for each one of these um, to um, build out the assignment. And ultimately, you'll end up with eight of these tutorials completed. Uh, each tutorial uh, in the README at the bottom shows you a picture of what your site should look like when you've completed the tutorial. So to get started, you want to fork this repository to your account. And this takes maybe a couple minutes. It's basically copying all the code that exists over. Once it's copied, then you want to clone it. So you want to make sure you're cloned with SSH, not the HTTPS. You should see something like get at GitHub. And then hit the copy button here to copy that address into your buffer. And then you can go out to um, a command line. Um, here I am in my user command line, and I've set up. Um, you can. Um, I've set this up under temp, but you can uh, set this up under. I would set up a projects right under your user directory, um, and then you can just navigate out there. I'm going to go into video and. 3010. So yeah, you might just create a project slash 3010, and then you can do your clone right into that. And there you go. And you're essentially kind of downloading all of that code. I have a passphrase, so I'm entering my passphrase key. Um, and you're set there. And at this point, you should be, if you've installed code into your path, you should be able to type in code watts 3010 and it will open it up. And there you have all of that code forked and cloned down to your local working space. And you're ready to get going. If you click on this index.html, you should see uh, links to your finished project. And of course, right now they're not there. OK. So as you work through these, you'll see they're, they're similar. They all have um, a README. Some of them have an index HTML. In some of them, you'll be creating your own H index HTML. But the README in each one of them will give you instructions on how to, how to work through it. So you can either do the README um, in your IDE, or you can also uh, use the um, just view it online. So if I open up HTML structure and semantics, it will show you the README as well. And when you're looking at the README, there's going to sometimes be content provided and general explanation. But there will also be a solution at the bottom that shows what it's actually a picture of what you expect to see when you're done. So you kind of have that to um, help you gauge whether you've got it working the way it's intended. Um, and a lot of learning about HTML, I mean, it's and CSS are besides the fact that they're languages, they have syntax. Um, they're very there's specific type of language that's more not imperative. There aren't commands, but more um, more declarative. In other words, you have an idea of what you want to achieve, and you create you you specify that through the formatting, what they call markup instructions. So it's really important to start learning how to map what you see visually to how you might code that. So you don't just want to be dealing with like a, you know, scrabble bunch of 
uh, language constructs and trying to shuffle them together, but to really learn how certain constructs, certain sets of the language, the HTML and CSS, create a visual that you're trying to achieve. And so we'll try to develop those patterns through these skills. So to start with, I can look at this um, structure and semantics, and we're, with structure and semantics, we're emphasizing that HTML is all about building structure. It's true that the browser will have certain default look and feel for certain tags. You know, the tags are used in HTML to create the markup. Um, but we don't want to rely on that for, for our look. We're going to use CSS to get the look, but we do rely on the HTML to provide the structure. And so we want to emphasize that. And we also um, can use semantic um, some of the semantic tags to help build a structure that can be read by screen readers, um, used by search engine optimization. You know, there's a whole slew of reasons why you want to use semantic HTML rather than um, just relying on the non-semantic. And I've got a link here and it shows you that, you know, I can achieve the same look of an H1. This is the, the largest header. Um, but um, with a non-semantic uh, tag. So I can achieve the H1 header look with a span tag and a certain set of styles. But this H1 gives information about what this content is about. So that's the important thing about semantics. It's meaningful. The word semantic means meaning, is that these tags provide meaning that other programs and can use to help discern what you're trying what content you're trying to pass along. So that's the reason we use it, and you can look at references that show you the many semantic types of HTML. And the non-semantic are basically div and span. So the, those create, and we'll learn more about the box model and about um, creating block and inline elements, but div and span give you your, your basic structures, but without really any meaning. But if you get into learning some of these uh, semantic tags, you not only provide structure, but you also give it meaning. So let's take a look at how, what we're going to do. We're going to start with these tags, header, h1, h2, footer, section, article, and p, to achieve uh, this, this look. So we're not even doing any CSS, no styling. We're just going to let the browser default to whatever it styles for these tags. Um, so, so let's get started on this. So the instructions are telling us use these tags and this content to create this output. And um, then it says we can validate our code using an online validator once we've published to GitHub.io. And GitHub.io is the server that serves up GH pages. So we're gonna we're gonna get this coded and then we're going to um, publish it and validate it. So to get started, we're going to go into our project here under semantics. We, we, right now we, we have the picture of our finished product here, but we don't have an HTML file. So let's start by adding that. So I'm just going to right click on this folder and add a new file, index.html. And we use the index.html. It's what the server looks for by default, the index. Um, is a kind of a keyword for 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 choosing a file to serve. If I didn't have an index, I'd have to give it a name, and then I'd have to specify the full path, including the file name, to to render it. Um, but if I use index, I just need to give the path up through the um, directory that it's in. So you'll see this; it will become clearer when we start looking at the published content. But in VS Code, I can start out an HTML file by entering the, the bang, the exclamation point, and hitting tab. And this gives me a lot of, a lot of HTML already uh, put together. And this is kind of what you need as a foundation for, build, for adding your content. So we have a doc type, which gives instruction to the browser that this is HTML5. So this particular doc type tells the browser, you know, as opposed to earlier versions that I'm using HTML5, I'm using the English language. My head section allows me to enter metadata and a title. 
and I'm just telling it I'm using UTF-8 and the viewport will learn more about responsiveness in, in future um, in future tutorials but this is just a basic way to indicate responsiveness and then uh, IE the in Microsoft Internet Explorer has some some uh, quirks and so this just tells it to use the edge version of IE anyway uh, the the title we are given that information in the readme so we'll just grab that title and the title ends up this this text ends up showing up in um, in the tab of the browser. So this is an important piece that you want to have a title and you want it to be meaningful. So I have this quotes from American Transcendentalist. And at this point, um, I don't have anything in the body, but I can, I do have an HTML file. I've got this set on auto save. So this X tells me it's saved. I can just right click on index HTML. I've got live server plugin installed and I can preview my contents. Now there's nothing here because I haven't put anything into the body, but you can see that the title is up in the in the tab. Right, so looking back, we, we're ready to start on the body. So the body is where all of the code and content go that you are gonna actually render inside the page. What you see is the screen. Um, and one thing we can do here, we can look at the, we want to take a look at this the content as it's specified and it's telling us the title we've already given headers and h1 you know h1 2 h3 we can we're, we see an outline here but it's not shown hierarchically so it's a little bit hard to see so I think it would be helpful if we have this preview to kind of compare the content that's being specified with that preview so let's see if I can split this up a little bit so yes um, I'm going to move this over here and I'm going to look at this picture here okay that's not going to work so well let's try we'll open up this image yes we'll, we'll, we'll have the image right next to this this content description and I think that will help to kind of see how we want to structure this so let's see okay so what we've got here is I'm just doing this to help get going um, is that we've got this header American Transcendentalism and it's an H1 and then a philosophy H2 and then we've got a main with a section one and a section two. So these are our two sections. Each section has two headers and two articles. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna build out this structure without putting any actual text in right away. Um, or no, maybe it'd be better. I will add some text as I go. That way we'll be able to kind of check as we're going that we're doing this correctly. So. We'll start with the header and the H1 and H2. So I'm in here and I'll just create a header and I'll have an H1 and an H2. And you can see it, it, it uh, gives you some, it places the cursor when you, when you create one of these tags in a position where you're, it's ready to place the content within the tag. So these are these are tags that have opening and closing parts to them. And you'll see not all tags do, but whenever you have an opening and closing markup, it means that you can put some content or some other tags inside. You can kind of nest something inside of it. Okay, so we've got a header in there. Let's take a look and see how that looks. And there we go. So we've got our our two titles in there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a main with a section one. And let's, so we really are going to have a main, and the main will include two sections. So let's set that up. So if I put in main and I have section 
And the thing is, the instructions don't give you a lot of clues about the hierarchy. You kind of have to really, I think, look at the picture to see how you might structure this. And so, and that's kind of what I want you to do is to turn this into a visual exercise. So um, within each section, you've got two headers, one's H3, H4. And notice we, we're not going to have to repeat the H1s. There's only going to be one of those, but we will have multiple H3s because we can see here that we've got one for each section. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to have in each section, we'll have an H3 and an H4. And let's just copy that in there. And we're going to have an H4. H4. I hope this is starting to come together so that you see kind of the pattern of how this works. And then within that section, we also are going to have two articles. And an article, I would say, I would think of something that has paragraphs. So let's see, do we only have one paragraph here? We have, yes. So it has multiple sentences, and the paragraph has multiple sentences. And so let's just put inside of our article, we're going to put, we're going to nest a paragraph. And we're going to paste that in there and format that. Okay, so we've got one paragraph for that article, and then we've got another article. And we are going to have a paragraph in there. And there's no rules about structuring. I think you have to kind of use your knowledge of, of English language and communication and whatnot to decide for yourself, is should this be a paragraph? Should, you know, you're the one that's giving it the meaning, you know, but I think the idea of building up a hierarchical structure that has some meaning is what is important. And these are common tags that you would see to, to build up this structure. So we've got our second article. Let's let's now take a look before we go on and see what this looks like. So there we go. We've got our our first section with its headers and its two articles. And you might not even need to call that an article. Maybe it is just a paragraph under H4. So there's not like a fixed rule about that. I'm just using some of these to to give you an example. And you can see that that made a mistake. You know, it's not really checking me here. And actually, our validation at the end will help with this. So let me go ahead and quickly um, fill out the next section. OK, to save a little time in video watching, I just went ahead and entered the second section here. And um, you know, it's a good idea to kind of keep this tidy. You don't really need to have blank spaces. Um, you can write comments in um, HTML, um, but I wouldn't put them in unless they really help. And a comment can be written, you know, this is a comment. This is a structured doc. And in Visual Studio Code, either a command slash, forward slash on Mac or control forward slash on Windows will turn that into a comment. And you can see the syntax for comment is this bracket, ankle, bra ankle brace, um, bang dash dash and it ends with dash dash any others other greater uh, greater than sign so less than bang dash 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 greater than um, and so you can you can put those in if they add something to your to your document you know something that a, a person reading it might not be able to figure out um, but I don't put them in just to fill space or just to I don't say anything that's obvious like I wouldn't write a, a Give me a, I wouldn't write a comment that said, you know, this is an article because we're, we're giving that meaning to it. So now we're down to, we just need to, we've, we've got the main is put our footer in. Oh, and by the way, we can take a look at this. It's always good to take a look as you're going along. And you can see now we've got the two articles, the two sections and with the two articles. Now we can put the footer in. And so the footer and I'm going to put it in a paragraph and it's just giving me a copyright 
So this is an important thing to include in your documents. Um, remember, HTML is all about creating shareable documents and providing the structure. And you'll see we'll get a lot. We'll be able to build a lot more into them with CSS. But you can see, even without doing any styles, the browser is interpreting these a little bit differently. It's inter it's styling the headers for us. But it's better than styling because it actually has some meaning. All right, so that looks good. And um, we've got our quotes down there. So the next thing that we want to it, and I think you can see that it pretty well matches it. I mean, it doesn't have to be exactly like this one doesn't have an extra space after quotes. But it's, it's roughly capturing the exact same thing, and that's what we're after. Sometimes you can make it look a lot better, like this, you know. But don't, you know, don't go out of your way. This is really, this particular exercise is really just an introduction to semantics and structuring. So once we've got that, we can um, open up. I'm going to use control tick to open up the terminal. And um, if I do a get status, I can see that I've, I've well, I do have a little modification to that. Nothing to worry about there. You can make some notes in the README if you want. Um, but I definitely have modified my index HTML, so I want to check that in. And so I'm going to do a git add, and I want both of them to go in. I could just, I could just, you know, do one, and sometimes that's a good idea. Like if I just wanted to check in the index HTML, I could specify that. But if I want everything to go in, I can say git add dot, and you'll see me do that a lot. And once I've got those staged, they turn green. And then I can do a git commit. And this commits them to my local repository. So I'm going to say added semantic HTML. And then I'm going to do a git push. And this should push this out to my remote repository on github.com. So let's go take a look at that. And here's my repository. So if I look under skills one, HTML, you can see that I have my index HTML. Now I just want to publish it. So I'm going to go to settings. And you only have to do this once. They'll all be published together. I'm going to publish the master branch. And it will take it a little bit of time to do the publishing. Again, we're on github.com, and we're publishing to github.io. We can tell it's published when this turns green. So at that point, I should be able to open this up. And this is showing me the index HTML that's at the root. Remember, back in here, we have this. this it's provided for you. And we should be able to click on this and see our work. So that would complete the tutorial on semantic and structure. All right.